uh, Mahwish says, what are the various times du'as can be answered? Well, Allah Azza wa Jal is close to us and He responds to whomever makes du'a, even to the disbelievers. Can you imagine this? If a disbeliever, a kafir, makes du'a, especially when he is in distress or someone has wronged him, Allah responds to him. The times of du'a are so many and it is it would not be sufficient for us to mention them but I'll just give you a small hint. The du'a on Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree in Ramadan, the du'a is answered. But before I continue, there are three types of answering du'a and we've mentioned this so many times before. So if I say, oh Allah, cure my illness, Allah can cure my illness, or Allah can deflect something equivalent to curing my illness. So if curing my illness requires a thousand euro, there is another calamity that it was decreed upon me that would have cost me a thousand euros and Allah deflected it. But I'm still making dua thinking that Allah is not responding to me. No, Allah responded, but you did not know. Thirdly, Allah Azza wa may store this, may store this for you on the day of judgment. So, oh Allah, cure my illness. You're not cured and nothing was deflected away from you. But when you come on the day of judgment, you'll find a lot of good deeds and you say, I didn't do these. And you will be told that this is part of answering and responding to your dua. So you can make dua on Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree in Ramadan. It is answered between Adhan and Iqama. Iqama announces the, the actual prayer. So even if I am at home and the time is due at one o'clock and I make dua until two o'clock, a whole hour, then I start my prayer of dhuhr or whatever, then this is a time where Allah responds and answers your dua. If it's in the masjid, it's well known. It's about 15 to 20 minutes between Adhan and Iqama. Also, Allah responds to the dua at the last hour of Friday. So just before sunset of Friday, an hour before that, if you're in the masjid, praising Allah, offering salutation to the Prophet ﷺ, making dua, Allah Azza wa answers this. Allah answers your dua in the last third of the night. As in the authentic hadith, Allah says, isn't there anyone asking me I should give? Is there, isn't there anyone seeking my forgiveness where I should give him, etc. So in these last third of the night, just before Adhan al-Fajr, this is a really high time. It's the peak time for answering du'as. At the time of raining, when it rains, Allah answers the du'a. When you hear uh, um, the roaster making its sound just before Fajr, the Prophet said, Islam, whenever you hear the roaster, uh, um, praying or making a sound, then ask Allah from His grace because it has seen an angel. So it's a time of dua. Also at the end of fard prayers and also volunteer prayers, but the hadith stated clearly that at the end of uh, uh, fard prayers, dubur as salawat al maktuba, and this is what made some people think that the hadith refers to after the fard prayer. When, and we've said this so many times that the hadith is understood in the light of other hadiths where the Prophet told us والسلام, that after offering salutation upon the Prophet والسلام, during salat and before salam, before concluding it, this is time of uh, dua where Allah answers those who call him.
not after salam, because after you finish your prayer and conclude it, it is time for dhikr, as Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah and Ibn al-Qayyim had uh, chosen. Also among the favored places of dua is when you are in sujood. The Prophet had said, the closest you are to Allah while you are in prostration. So choose whatever you wish. It is worthy of Allah Azza wa answering you. And this, of course, as we've also mentioned before, just reminders, that is within the Salat. Nowadays, there's a, an innovation, a new trend. After Fajr prayer, after it's concluded, people are making dhikr. After five, ten minutes, all of a sudden you see people prostrating. They're not in Salah. And they prolong their prostration. After they finish, friend, my friend, come. What, have, what, what are you doing? He said, this is uh, prostration for dua. He said, but you're not praying. He said, yes, this is a separate prostration. This is haram. This is innovation. It's not acceptable. You have committed a grave sin. Others repeat this on and on and say that this is prostration of gratitude, of shukr. And again, this is an innovation. When you are blessed with something that is not reoccurring, the sunnah is to offer one sajda, one prostration of gratitude. If your boss gives you a paycheck at the end of the month, you do not perform sajud al-shukr. Why? Because this is reoccurring. If your wife cooks a good meal, some would say that this is not reoccurring, but generally speaking, this is a reoccurring blessing. You do not prostrate for gratitude or for shukr. But if someone tells you that your uncle who's, who was in ICU for six weeks has woken up from uh, his coma and now, mashallah, he's communicating and he's becoming better, then you may prostrate because this is one in a lifetime occasion that requires showing and expressing your gratitude to Allah, etc. And Allah Azza wa knows best.